Thanks for joining in today. Next couple of Mondays, we're going to do this at 2 o'clock also. We're going to do uh, everything new in the MLS. Come on, buddy. This is Ted. Ted wants to be in on the meeting. Actually, I'm going to put him down. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, MLS next Monday and CMAs the Monday after. So uh, I'm gonna share my screen. That's not the one. Bear with me a second. Here we go, that should be better. So uh, Remind is a data service that was formed by a bunch of powerhouse agents out of Washington, DC. And they struck up a relationship with our New Jersey MLS and Garden State MLS a while back and they provide uh, tax data and property data in a very uh, simple, way using mapping and um, very simple graphics rather than a whole lot of typing. So the way we get into the Remind is we go into the New Jersey MLS. Uh, whoever's on, can you mute yourself, please? That would be great for everyone. So um, half a step back. New Jersey MLS includes Remind Pro. Larry. Yes. Uh, just so you know, you're you have to change your screen share because it's on the on your like only your Zoom screen. So you have to uh, switch that screen to your internet browser. All right. Let me see. So you just want to click on the share and then choose the one that has the Remind on it. How about that? Yep, now we can see your browser. Okay, good, better? Okay, yep. so again, taking a half a step back. If you belong to Garden State MLS, Garden State also offers Remind, but they offer the standard version of Remind, which is not gonna be as full featured as the pro version. So if you are logging into New Jersey MLS and you go to Remind, you will get Remind Pro which will give you access to contact data where available for owners and also allow you to track um, thousands of properties rather than few. All right, so we'll go off the New Jersey MLS version. So the way we get in is we go to the search bar. I hope everyone can see this. We go to the search bar and we go down to connect to Remind. And when we get there, it opens up a new tab and you will see this. So you are greeted, you are greeted with these few tiles and this is your welcome screen or your splash screen and you'll get something called Market Pulse which allows you to look at uh, individual activity in certain towns you'll have a collection of your own listings, which is kind of handy to have right in front of you. You'll have an engagement section where if you engage clients and invite them to Remind, you can track what they're looking at. You'll have a listings update tile for selected towns that you look at. 
And again, you can click on this gear on any of the tiles and you can duplicate a card or uh, delete a card. So what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to duplicate this market pulse. So I have one for Wyckoff and I have one for Mawa and I have one for Ridgewood and you can create one, two, 10, however many of these market pulses you'd like. And you can also select how many days back you're gonna look. You have today and yesterday and last seven days in a month. Reese, it looks like I have to admit all these folks that are coming in. Is that part of the host deal? I guess I, I, guess I am and I will. So that's the splash screen. The exciting part that you're all here for is the search button over here on the left side. So I'm gonna go over to search and we're gonna jump right into what you can see. When you first land on the map, it's probably gonna look more like this. And you're gonna see a large area somewhere and you're gonna see these blue circles with, uh, this says 6,000. And this tells you how many properties are in the radius around that map area. So as you zoom in, you will see the map zoom in. And as soon as you get to the zoom level where you can actually see building shapes, you're gonna see these dots instead of the round numbers. And you're now down at the zoom level where you can work. With me so far? Good. The exciting part of this product and where it really excels in it is its ability to use these tiles over here on the left edge to simply tap on them and have them use color heat maps to get you the data that you would like to see. So right now I am hovering somewhere in Waldwick, I believe. And I'll come over here to the heat map. And the first tile on the heat map is property value. So I'll click on property value and you'll see it generates this colored heat map. And the colors correspond to the various levels of property value. Word of caution, these property values are guesstimates based on the algorithms that this particular application runs and they are similar if not identical to algorithms that other services run, like the Z word that we never mention out loud and other services like RPR. So there are not little remind bots running around looking inside these houses. These are values that are guesstimated from available tax data. They are not realtor driven. These algorithms and these values will be used throughout the application to generate all these other numbers. So the phrase I like to use when you're looking about the, and talking about all this is you have to take all this with a grain of salt because things like equity and sell score that you'll see soon are going to be generated starting with the guesstimated property value that they've come up with. When we dig in further, you're gonna see where the property values come from. They're going to come from combining the algorithms from various data sources like um, Redfin and the Z word and Black Knight, which produces our Paragon MLS system and various other data sources. And they, they put these all in a blender and they develop a range and that's where these values come from. I hope that makes sense. So these are not the town tax assessments. These are not realtor input as to what they think. These are algorithm driven guesstimates from public record. I hope that makes sense. All right, so that's property value. I'm gonna go down to the next tile, which is part of the discussion and it's home equity. And we have other pretty colors. 
Now, as we likely know, home equity is defined starting with the property value less what the homeowner owes. So if the value is a guesstimate and what they owe is also a guesstimate, you have to, again, take this whole thing with a grain of salt. The example that the Remind people gave us when they first introduced this to us is if someone bought the property a couple of years ago and the public record has the mortgage they took out and the mortgage rate they got, they can guesstimate how much is remaining on their payments. The word of caution here is if the owners won the lottery two years after they bought the house and they paid off the mortgage, that is not public record and that will not be reflected anywhere that anyone can find. So this system and others may think they still owe a half a million dollars on the mortgage. And guess what? They don't. I hope that makes sense. So again, all these metrics and all these beautiful colors and all these graphs are based on what they think they know. And these guesstimates are as good as everyone else's. And I'm not throwing stones at the application. It's a very strong application, but when you're talking about it, you have to temper what you think you know about these properties because it could say that they owe 400K and they could owe nothing. If they got into a mortgage program, like many people do, where they accelerate their payments and pay an extra thousand a month to pay it down, you'll never see that because that's not public record. Any questions so far? Good, next tile. Ownership time. Who might wanna know this? We're getting a lot of good feedback since we introduced this from people that are door knocking, people that are doing circle prospecting. I may be doing an open house at this location right here that I'm circling, and I may want to walk this block. I may not want to knock on the doors and spend a lot of time with the homeowner who bought last week. I may want to go to this tile and target people that have been in the house more than 15 years because they may be more likely to be selling. That likelihood and that algorithm that these folks run, which is kind of cool, uh, contributes to something that you're starting to see in other applications called sell score or likely to list. You will notice that these Remind folks have caused such a ruckus in the industry that Realist and HomeSnap start to look a lot like what you're looking at now where they didn't a few months ago. So they're looking to tell you an awful lot more about who they think might list. And someone who has a lot of equity, going back to here, someone who has a lot of equity and has been in the house a long time, in their opinion, might be much more likely to list or sell. Does that make sense? So we've done property value, home equity, ownership time. And that brings us to sell score, which is what I was referring to. And you'll, again, you'll see this in Realist now, in the new version of Realist. If you click the R in the MLS, much more data, much newer, much cooler. And HomeSnap is starting to do the same thing and show you things like sell score. So you can go into a neighborhood and click sell score high and it immediately filters down people with those factors that they deem might be attractive that these folks might be selling. And if you then go into more data that you can find as far as the turnover in a town, you might find out that the turnover in your town is every seven years and you may also want to include people that have been there more than 10 years instead of 15 or 20. So again, the power of this application is all this information at your fingertips without you having to do any, we haven't done any typing. All we're doing is clicking on these tiles and it's instantly filtering out all these people. 
All right, moving down. Again, those folks that are mailing or knocking, you may wanna know where the absentee owners are. You can get this information from the tax data within the MLS, very simply. And in, within the MLS, if you've ever done it, you can run mailers right from the MLS. If you care to, you always could, going back 15 years. You go in, you select the people that are absentee owners out of state, and you click the Avery label you want, and you can print labels, boom, right from there. Many people have done it, many don't know it's there. This is another avenue, they've given it to you this easily. You may wanna know who lives there, who might be corporate owned, who might be absentee in state, lives in the next town, they're a developer. You may wanna know who is absentee out of state. Again, for people that are really aggressively going after this and maybe doing mailings. Uh, another very helpful tile right here, flood zone. So you don't have to go any further to get your flood information. What you'll want to keep in mind again, because there's a caveat to most all of these, is that you have to take a look in deeper, just like you have to do with realist and see what the date is on the flood map. If you check realist all the time, which most of us do, you'll notice that some of the flood maps are 10 years old. Eight years ago, we had Sandy. Lots of things changed with flood maps after Sandy. So you may wanna check with a homeowner and find out if they have a Loma level. You wanna check with Brian Allen and have him run a flood cert and find out what they think because he's gonna have the current data. You can't call him for every property. I'm looking at 30 and Brian wants you to run a flood cert on 30 properties. He's not gonna do that. But if you have something in particular, he's gonna help you out. You have this value in house. I had two particular listings on the same pond a couple of years ago in Mawa. Both of them show up as flood maps. So I know what I have to say within the MLS, but I checked with Brian Allen and I checked with the homeowners and found out we have a letter from FEMA and this and that. So this allows you to get that much more data and not have to uh, look so far for it. So this is a big help. Let's go to the next tile. Well, I zoomed out, sorry. The next tile is building type. Self-explanatory. Let's zoom down to some more tiles. Land use. This may be something you're interested in. A lot of people in certain towns may wanna to take a look and find out whether or not a property is mixed use. Again, you can find this out within Realist. You always have been able to do that, but you have to do some more typing and more things in Realist. I don't know if you typically click on it. Many people have not, but here it is right here in another package. So for example, um, if you are on Lafayette Avenue in Hawthorne, you may want to know whether or not a building is mixed use. You may want to know you have a house next to a lawyer's office, what my zoning might look like. Again, this is a help for you. It's right here. Very simple. I haven't used this too much, but they put in an Airbnb button. So apparently if you're looking elsewhere, and by the way, I didn't say this at the beginning of the presentation, this is nationwide. So I'm getting people that wanna know about buying a BNB in, in Cape May, which we spend a lot of time in, or you may get someone who wants to make a purchase out in Las Vegas and they may wanna know about values in Las Vegas and guess who can help them? You can, using Remind. You're not gonna see listings in Las Vegas, but you're gonna know a whole lot about this information just by clicking on these parcel dots. 
So you can then give your clients much more comfort in the fact that you are bigger and more global than immediately in your town. I can help them out in Tewksbury, New Jersey, or Blairstown. I can help them down to Cape May. I can help them in Tacoma, Washington, if I want to. So the Airbnb button would identify Airbnbs that are known in a, a popular area, might be the Jersey Shore, and you might be able to assist someone with an area that might be popular for Airbnb. I haven't used this too much, but it's there. By the um, way, what happens if you click on one of those dots, then it, you just said then if you want to know more, click on one of the dots. Does a whole lot of information come up then? Yes, it does. We're going to get to that in a few minutes, Miss Knight. Okay, sorry. Sorry. If I'm Not at all. So I'm going to run through the tiles and then we'll click on some dots and see what you can see when you highlight a property. How's that? Hmm. Tony Pizacane is nodding. He says, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm into that. Thank you, sir. Uh, here's another valuable one, and I need someone to tell me why this might be valuable for you. Mortgage rate. If you're really aggressive and you feel like putting on a seminar and you can look up mortgage rates, why might you want to know this? You could suggest that somebody refinances. Thank you. You may want to call one of your preferred vendors having this information at hand. Say you want to do a mailer or a joint flyer or put on a seminar at your local library and pick up a bunch of refi clients and become very good friends with your mortgage partner. So it's right here. Mortgage age. Keep in mind, you can also overlay mortgage age with mortgage rate. So I can say, who's got a mortgage more than five or 10 or 15 years? And it highlights and you can see it reduce the number of blue dots on my map. And then I can do mortgage rate and say, who see who's got something higher than four and a half and overlay the map and it'll further filter. So all these people that are the remaining blue dots are part of that overlay. So they've been there and they've got a mortgage older than 10 years and they've got a rate over four and a half, might be good candidates. Next tile, last sale price. Again, comes out of the tax record. A lot of people want to know about distressed properties. Properties that have filed for Liz pendants, notice of defaults, and, and foreclosures. A lot of the agents I'm talking to are coming out, they're aggressive and they want to know about distressed properties. You do, uh, most of the feedback I'm getting since we introduced this is that people are paying for services now they may not have to pay for. Keep in mind, everything you're seeing is free as part of your MLS membership. All right, that's distressed. Cash buyers, I'll have to get back to you on because uh, that one's been unclear to me. And I should know that, but I'll get back to you on that. So let's, um, let's take the hint from uh, Rebecca and click on one of these properties so you can see what goes on. All right, so I'm going to pick this one right here. And I'm going to click on it. And what you can't see is that it pops up and gets highlighted on the right side of your screen. And when I click on it, it's going to give me more information. So I have a couple of choices. It tells me it's off market, sell score is high, 
It gives me the guesstimate of value. It gives me the guesstimate of equity. It tells me who it's owned by for 30 plus years. I can either scroll down to the various features of this property, or I can go across the top and click on the topic and it will bring me down without scrolling. So I have various maps here that I can use. I can go to uh, street maps. I can go to flood information. I can go to local area mapping and I can go to street view here. So you can see right here that this property is occupied. Uh, absentee owner, no, it tells me who they are. It's built in 82, there's the square footage. Uh, it's a two-story structure. There's the lot size. It's uh, single family zoning, block and lot, dimensions. Uh, here is the assessment values over here. A lot of information, garages, parking, mortgage information, equity information, and then it gets down into some other areas that you may like. It shows me where the valuation calculations come from. I talked about this at the beginning. So this particular property is using three sources of valuation. It's using First American Residential, it's using Black Knight, and it's using Redfin. And these are the values. You can see that these ranges are not very tight. They're rather broad, so you have to keep that in mind. Again, I'm gonna use the word guesstimate. And it gives you the date that they put this valuation out there. Let's go to schools. School information is provided by Niche, a very popular source for gathering data gives you the schools and so forth, and it has a grading system from Niche, and it has elementaries and middles and high schools. Niche just came out with a brand new rating of all the schools in the state yesterday. Demographics. Excuse me, Larry, where does it say that the source is Niche? I, I think I missed that. Can you see what I'm circling? No, I can't see because the pictures are pictures are in the way. Uh, I tried to move you, but I guess that doesn't change what you see. It's on the right side under the school information. Each person has to move the photos from their screen. So, Rebecca, you would just click on a photo, and then you would just move the photos to another side. Or you can minimize them. Thank okay, you. I'll just take Larry's word for it. It's underneath the photos then. Okay. You take my word for it, that's the best possible answer. Oh, totally. I know Thank how to you. make happy, Larry. Thank you. <clears throat> Demographics information. We don't, we're taught at the beginning when we get our licenses, we're not supposed to guess about demographics and give people our opinion about who lives in town. I provide a source of data, I don't provide my opinion. Here it is. <laughs> You can also get that through the MLS by clicking on any town link. It will give you the demographics. Who lives in town, who commutes to work, how far, who's, who's college educated and so forth. Property history. Uh, not too much in there. Associated people, which is something that everyone's asking about. This may be why some of you are here. Associated people are primarily the owners. It will also <laughs> people who may have listed this address as their home. So if this place has been rented, you are very likely to see tenant information in this history. You will sometimes, not all the time, see a phone number and in order to keep you out of real estate jail, if you can see what I'm circling, it says DNC, and that is not the Democratic National Convention, that is do not call. If you choose to call, you're on your own, but they're giving you the benefit of telling you who's registered for DNC. Sometimes 
We can click on a hundred of these. Sometimes you're gonna see an email. Uh, as you can see from the disclaimer that we've also got in our MLSs all the time, information believed to be accurate and no one is standing on their head and guaranteeing it. So I can't swear to you that this is an accurate phone number or that emails are real, but this, if any, this is where they are. To answer another question that's gonna come up, that comes up all the time in the seminars, if you're going to drop other services that provide you phone numbers and information on who to call every day, the answer is no, this service will not send you emails proactively every day and tell you who to call. But if you're interested in this particular house up here at 8th Gateway Court in Waldwick, this is the registered phone number for Janet. I hope that's clear. So many agents have come to me and tell me that they're dropping these other pay services where they're paying a few hundred dollars a month. But again, this service is here. It will provide this information you see in many cases, it will not proactively email you such as these other services do. I hope that's clear. Questions so far? That's most of the system in a half an hour. Again, the beauty of the system is that it's simple and it's tile based and not typing. So you don't have to know a whole lot. You're not gonna be typing your fingers to the bone. You're gonna be going through with a heat map. You can come over here and you can draw. Let's say you're doing an open house over here. You can bring up a shape and you can click and draw a shape here and say, this is the area that I want to go and look at and it will highlight those and you can go door knock and pull up their information. So let me show you how to pull up their information and do something with it. And this would be the next step beyond click on one and make one phone call. So let's say you wanted to go onto this street over here and you wanted to call these people and I want these people right here. I put on a filter and I like this area. Maybe there's something special about Crescent Elementary School and I wanna be able to contact and maybe mail those people. This is what I do. You may have to move your photos over to see what I'm about to do over here. Over on the right side, if you can see where I'm highlighting, Right now, map is highlighted because I'm in map view. I'm going to click on list and change to list view. I hope you can see that. I can then click on these addresses and highlight them all. And I can then save them or add them to a cart. Up in the right hand corner, I have a cart, much like shopping, and I click on cart, and I've added these 43 properties to a cart, and I can name them Crescent School, or anything you want. You see that? I can't see you, I minimized you. Let me see if I can pull you back. Okay, I have you back. Was everyone able to see what I did there? I switched from map view to list view. I then was able to highlight the list and drop it into a cart and name the cart, whatever I like. One of the things you get with Remind Pro over Remind Standard is the ability, I think it's 10,000 carts. I'd have to look it up, but an enormous amount of properties to follow rather than a few so that's why the MLS voted to give you Remind Pro. Larry, could you just go over again how you went from, I've minimized my photographs now. So can you just go over how you minimized, um, uh, you, so you changed from map view to 
Map to list in the upper right hand corner. Ah, oh, okay, I see that now. Map to list. And then you click the button at the top if you want all of them. And it highlights all of them, selects all of them. And then you go back up into the right hand corner and you select cart. And you put them in a cart and you name the cart. Okay, got it. Thank you. If you're, if you're interested in the data portion, such as mailings or um, other services, you have to put everything in a cart because the cart is where all that happens. So let me go to one of my uh, saved carts and I'll show you things you can do. I hope I have a saved cart. Oh, good. All right. So I must have gone over here and created a, uh, let's see. Oh, I got a Mawa absentee cart that I put together. So I highlighted properties in Mawa where I have absentee owners. You might want to do a mailing on that. Once I am on this list, you the same thing. I, if I want all of them, I click the button at the top of the list, which selects all of them. You can also deselect and select them one at a time. Same as every other list you work on. You then have some choices across the top. I hope you can see this. You can export them. So if you're working with Prism Communications and you're doing flyers or mailers, you can call Billy or Prism or whoever you're working with, you're doing it yourself, you're taking this list to Staples and you can export this list to a CSV file and you can then say, I put together a mailer or let's put together a mailer and send it out to all these people. And instantly you have a, you have a list of properties that you have custom chosen. Good so far? Hello. Hello, Jennifer. Hi. Comment or are you just saying hello? Okay. I'll take that as a yes. So yeah, you have the ability- for that, that question you asked about DNC was yes, it is do not call. It wasn't a question, I was telling you. Oh, no, no, she, Jen, Jennifer Posecki uh, asked a question in chat. And I'm sorry, you, you search by absentee owner, is that you, you put it in parameters on the search absentee? Yes. Yeah, I click the absentee owner tile and I selected properties with absentee owner. I saved them to a cart and now I can manipulate within the cart. Uh, another option I have, I have not done this myself, but I know it's available. Let's say that you want to do your own mailers and you're very industrious. You can go and click send mailers. And integrated within the Remind platform is a vendor called Rocket Print and Mail. And you can submit these properties to them for a certain fee. I'm not exactly sure how much it is. And they will send these things for you. I'm highlighting Prism Communications first because they are in-house group, unless anything has changed. And again, you can go export and you can send these things and create a flyer and send it to Billy and say, here's 150 people I found. Let's put that flyer together and I'll approve it. And boom, it goes out to all these people. So again, if you want to do any of these exciting things, you have to put your properties in a cart. As you can see, this product is all about property information. It's not about what's listed. It's not intended to supersede or take over for the MLS. You will be able to see properties that are listed. You can use it for search, but it's not, it's not as powerful in that fashion as your MLS. It's really intended for data. Um, 
and to go look at off market and who the neighbors are and so forth. Again, you can do this with a lot of other packages all along, but this is much simpler than the other packages like Realist. Larry, how many uh, properties can go in a cart and can you add more and more to a cart? Yeah, excellent question, Leslie. Uh, you can put uh, thousands in a cart and you can have lots of carts. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Nice to see you. Congratulations on the wedding. Thank you so much. Am yeah. I still glowing? Yes. yes. Yes, you're looking well. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Very nice. Who's wedding? Uh, our son got married. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. So, yes, uh, again, one of the reasons that the MLS chose to go Remind Pro and offer it at no charge to all of the members is that it offers these additional services beyond Remind Standard, such as the ability to track, I think, 10,000 properties and to get those names and potential phone numbers and emails at no additional charge. If you're using Remind Standard, I believe it's $3 per name. So if you're big on looking up names, you can see this is an immediate savings and it's part of your membership. That's why it was selected. Um, down on the left-hand side, hopefully you can see this. You have the ability to um, chat with other members that may be online. You have the ability to invite your contacts, your clients, Let's say you're working with investors and they're looking at neighborhoods and they're looking at beyond what's listed. You can invite them in here as contacts and send them properties from here as opposed to regular listing sends. You also have uh, support lines and you have a support center and there are videos and tutorials and I've tested this online and reached out to them and they respond back within a couple of minutes. You can get on there as a member and say, I'm lost and help me out and they talk to you. So again, going back to the search, we've got uh, 15 more minutes. From the feedback we're receiving, the most powerful feature of the package is the search and the ability to look at any of these properties. You can type in an address, you can go up here, you can put in MLS numbers, you can search for agents. Again, you have nationwide. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to, clients and so forth that are looking out of the area and are really pleased and impressed with your ability to look anywhere. If they want to buy waterfront property in Kansas, you can help them. <laughs> Where's the waterfront property in Kansas? Well, I, I certainly want to be the one to help them. <laughs> I've gotten two calls this week from uh, associates who are soon to be clients and are asking me about help in the Carolinas and Florida. So you can go anywhere and tell them lots and lots of information without having to travel there or call someone that's local. Again, if you leave our immediate area, you will not see listings in Las Vegas, but you will be able to look at guesstimated values in neighborhoods. You're out in Austin, Texas, you know, at Mega Camp, and you wanna look at things out there, um, you can go take a look and see what real estate looks like anywhere. Everybody wants to know you now have the ability to go do that. And anything we can do to keep them off the Z word and keep them attached to us, I think is a good thing. But Larry, what is that little box at the top that says nationwide search? Do you have to check that if you're looking in another state? Uh, I believe so. I if think that's new. I've not seen it, that before. Excuse me? 
I've not seen that before. So I'm going to go type this in live and uh, let's go see. Okay, we're going live. Let's go zoom in. That's a pretty big place. As soon as I get in closer and I can actually see buildings, I'm going to get real properties and there they are. Hmm. So there now, they are. If, so if I want to if look at this box wasn't checked, would it not let you do that? Uh, let's find out, shall we? Uh, check the box again. So as a result of that test, Rebecca, I uh, admit I don't know what the box does. No, it doesn't. Because it appears to go there it. anyway. Yeah. So we'll find out. Yeah, okay. But I do like, even if we stay within our state, I do like the ability to look down the shore and so forth and get an idea. Mm. My neighbor just put their house on in mantelloking. Do you have any idea what it's worth? Um, you know, I want to know what's doing in LBI. I was just down there. I didn't bring up my app, you know, and so forth. By the way, there is a Remind app. Mobile app. Keep in mind, the Remind is part of your service. If you haven't clicked on it already, you will have to sign up and put in your identifier so it knows you're with New Jersey MLS. But it, there is no charge. As many of you who have attended my sessions have heard me say, if you're getting to a point with RPR or Remine or Cloud and they're asking you for a credit card, you've gone a wrong direction. Everything we're talking about is no charge. In I should say included with your membership. Larry, they don't have, they don't mark houses that are uh, currently on the market. Is that correct? Uh, it's an excellent question. Not out of our area. <laughs> but if, I search, area? if I go back and I search, let me jump back and search within our area and you'll see the answer to that. Okay, let's do Ridgewood, if you don't mind. I don't mind. When you go down to this view and look, you'll notice above the tiles, you have filters for active. You can search here, residential. You can choose status and uh -huh. say, show me things that are active. And there's the answer to your question. Mm, that's great. Again, when you leave the area, you will not see what's on the market. But when you're in your area, you will see what's on the market and what's off the market. Great, thank you. You'll, you'll also be welcome, you'll also be able to see the listed price versus the guesstimate price, just as you can with these other services. Keep in mind, we've now got lots of these services available to us that will give us all sorts of opinions. Most of them are given to us from the same sources. So, Larry, does it show you first bars in your area? Uh, I don't believe it does. So keep in mind again, whether or not you're using Remind, whether or not you're taking advantage of other powerful sources like RPR, you're going to see what's listed in your local area and you're going to see uh, guesstimates or valuation models and valuations of those properties. <laughs> Most of them are generated by these same sources. So it might be the Z word, might be Redfin, might be Black Knight, who is the vendor for our MLS. So these are well-known and reliable sources, but again, these are ranges. 
what you saw before when I clicked on a property, it says that the valuation of this property is somewhere between six and 800,000. I mean, I need a little more definition than that, but that's what you're gonna see. So I hope that answered that. You will see- What's your personal preference, Larry? I know you before this, you used to like RPR a lot. Do you prefer Remind now? If you had, if you, or do you use them differently? I use them differently. So what would you use Remind for that you can't get on RPR, RPR or vice versa? I would want to use Remind if I wanted to circle prospect around an open house I'm doing. I can't okay. think of anything that would be easier than simply drawing a circle and highlighting a neighborhood and instantly be able to pull up the data on that neighborhood as to whose door I should knock on. Okay. I use RPR when I'm in my MLS and I see a listing price and I instantly want to jump over to the RPR button and have it come up and tell me what it thinks it's worth and why. Okay. When it was last sold or whatever else I may want to do. Or if it's in the floodplain. Or if it's in the floodplain. So again, yeah. my, my focus here in, in bringing these products to light is to help the members or our office mates be aware of all these packages so you can select the one that works best for you depending on what you need. Mm -hmm. I want to know RPR really well, Remind, Cloud CMA, Realist, which ones are best, which ones have the best flood maps and the more you play with them I can guarantee the more you're going to know which one to choose when. I stood in front of a house yesterday after taking my clients out to open houses and they wanted to know about the house across the street. I'm standing there with my smartphone. What it's not listed. So, you know, the timer's on. What do you bring up to instantly be able to tell them about the house across the street? My client reaches for the Z word, which I will never use. So I have to pick and choose. So you want to know that all these other things are at your fingertips. What do you bring up? I brought up home snap, spun around in the street, took a snapshot of the house and instantly told me what the value of the house was, how large it is, when it was built, what the parcel looks like and so forth. And you know, that worked out. So again, the- uh, I hope parcel, they were impressed. Well, they liked it a lot. And naturally, you then share the app with them so that they can play. Mm. So again, the more you play with these things, the more you get familiar, you know, this is what I want to know. These are the tools in my tool belt. What do I want to do? The tools that I use are different when I'm sitting here in front of my laptop as they are when I'm putting my phone down on the trunk lid of the car like I did yesterday. So you want to know what these tools are, what they do, and, and what you have at your fingertips. Questions? I've got four minutes before I need to jump to a three o'clock. I've enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Very helpful, Larry. Thank you very much. Super. Again, next week, Monday, two o'clock, we're doing everything that's new in the New Jersey MLS. Lots of new stuff. Really powerful stuff, including predictive listing data within the CMA. So I'm not going to wait for the CMA class in two weeks to show you this because it's the newest feature and I think it's going to knock everyone on their ear. Sally's nodding. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> Is that Zoom next Monday at two o'clock, Larry? Yes, the next two Mondays at two o'clock. So I'm going to throw you a teaser on this feature I'm going to talk to you about next week because I'm going to lead with it. I think it's going to be the most exciting thing it has been uh, brought out in the last several months. You're going to list a property and you're looking at a CMA and you get to the last CMA screen and you're talking about price and you get to that screen where you say, should I print the price it recommends or am I going to leave it blank? And I'm going to go talk to the sellers and see what they think. The MLS has now harnessed the prospect buyer data that 
thousands of us agents put into the MLS as to what towns we're looking for, what houses, three bedroom, four bedroom, two and a half baths, lot size, taxes below 15,000, with pools, without, with elevators, without, whatever it is, you're now gonna have the ability to move a slider once you've gotten to the pricing page of your CMA, and I think we're gonna put it somewhere else besides, and you're gonna be able to say, if I move the price this much, there's 628 buyers that are interested in a house like this in the MLS. Doesn't tell you who they are, but it's gonna tell you. And if I move the slider and raise the price, now there's only 368 buyers. And if I lower the price to where I really want it, there's now 932 buyers that want that four bedroom, two and a half bath house. So Larry, really quick, can I ask a question? Of course. So is that like the reverse prospecting when you're doing, uh, when you put people in, is that where that information's coming from? Yeah, yes, thank you, Jennifer. It's coming from all of the input information that we've all loaded into prospects. It's confidential. And along those lines, another factor that uh, will be brought up is the fact that reverse prospecting has been turned on again and it's now more discreet and it's not giving away your client information. So it now defaults to yes, which means that if you're searching for a four bedroom, two and a half bath in Ridgewood between eight and 950, if you say reverse prospecting, if Rebecca has that house, she may just call you and say, I know you have a prospect X, Y, Z, I've got that house. Yeah, I never ever checked that box because I didn't like the idea of of them of my clients being contacted but you're saying that that's clients don't sense. get contacted now it's the agent gets contacted who has the client and the the client is discreet big, big improvement big improvement just happened mm. that's huge we're going to introduce that next week we're going to do mls new information next week monday two o'clock following week we're going to do cmas Thank you all. It's been a great hour. I hope it was valuable. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. And I just want to say to everybody, Thank you, Larry. you would not get this kind of class at any other company except KW. So be glad you're here. <laughs> always. From your friendly neighborhood oh, sponsor. <laughs> we are always glad we're here, Sally. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Love you all. Thank Bye. You. Be safe. Thank you, Larry. Be safe out there. Bye. Bye. Bye.